Basket Case 1 is an interesting little movie that shows the bond between two brothers. Basket Case 2 turns up the strangeness by introducing us to all kinds of unique looking individuals. Basket Case 3 takes it all to a whole new level of weirdness. So, remember the worst scene from part two? The one where Blyle's doing it with Eve? Well, that's how Basket Case 3 opens up, just in case you got that mental image out of your head. Dwayne's gone crazy after the death of Susan, and sews his brother back on. Ruth is forced to separate them and put him in a straitjacket. Months go by, nine months in fact, and the freaky family has to go on a vacation. You see, Eve is pregnant, and the only doctor Ruth trusts for the job is Uncle Hal, who lives in Georgia. So they load up and head out. All aboard! Leaving their turn signal on. Man, I hate when people do that. Next, we meet Uncle Hal and the local sheriff, who goes to check in on him and his son, Little Hal, who seems to have a knack for inventing things. As he leaves, we see Hal sitting up on top of the roof, and I don't know, he looks pretty normal, but just wait. Ruth pulls over for a supply run, and she gets a lot of condoms. Do any of these come in extra large? I guess she doesn't want another accident like Blyle and Eve had. Inside, she meets the sheriff, and outside, Dwayne meets the sheriff's daughter, Opal. Dwayne actually wants to get arrested, because if they take him in, then they'll have to bring in his brother, too, and then they'll be together again. But Opal, being from Georgia, hasn't heard of the Bradley twins, so they're free to go. The bus makes it to Uncle Hal's, and he's happy to see everyone. All right, that's real looking good. He goes inside to see the mom-to-be, and wow, what can I say? She's looking pretty pregnant. They got here just in time, too, because her water breaks. While they rush her inside, Ruth goes to see Little Hal. And guess what? He's her son. Yeah, remember in part two when Lou the editor mentioned Ruth had a son with 11 arms but died during childbirth? Well, he didn't die. It's just Uncle Hal adopted him. Not wanting Dwayne to miss the birth of his niece or nephew, Ruth begrudgingly takes the straitjacket off Dwayne. And as soon as she leaves the room, he jumps out the window. Everyone's working really hard to prepare for the baby, and Blyle's let loose so he can witness the birth. But as soon as he sees Hal with a giant syringe, he gets a flashback to when him and Dwayne were separated and he freaks out, attacking Uncle Hal, forcing Ruth to take over. Which, I mean, if she can handle the delivery, then why did they have to go all the way to Georgia in the first place? But I guess there's no time to dwell on that, because Eve's ready to be a mom. This part is actually really funny, and it's all because of little Hal. Eve ends up having 12 babies. That's right, a dozen. While that's happening, Dwayne managed to get himself locked up, and the small town police are starting to realize that he's one part of the Bradley killers. They find his mugshot and discover that there's a million dollar reward for bringing him in, so they head to collect it. At Hal's place, everyone is celebrating the birth. Well, everyone except Uncle Hal, that is and the cops show up to look in the window and see all the freaks gawking at him. Jesus, that one looks like a fish. <laughs> Unbelievable. But there's no sign of wild. Luckily, there is an open window they can sneak into. But guess what? That's Eve's room, and she's still resting with her babies after giving birth. The cops find the mini Blyles and think about using them as bait to lure out their father to collect the reward. Little baby Blyles. 
But Eve doesn't like that idea one bit, and she goes into attack mode. Jesus God, there he is, there he is! The cops aim and fire at her, thinking they shot Belial. But they don't wait around to find out, because they know that Blast is going to attract all the freaks, so they book it out of there. Back in the jail cell, because of his psychic connection, Dwayne can tell something's happening. But for no reason whatsoever, Opal starts to strip in front of him. It comes out of the blue, and I have no idea what triggered her. I guess she just has some kind of weird kink for guys in jail cells. You broke the wall, and now you must pay. That is until she's feeling him up, and what she touches that? his scar. What is that that I'm touching? She starts to freak out a bit, just long enough for her dad to come in and put a stop to all of it. Not long after that, the other cops come in to tell him about what happened to them, and that they kidnapped Blyle's babies. One cop says that he shot Blyle, and Dwayne freaks out for a minute, but he can still feel him. He knows his brother's out there somewhere. The sheriff heads on over to Hal's house to try to get to the bottom of all this, and inside he confirms what his deputies told him. There really is a house full of freaks. Ruth is there, and she's ticked. She wants the babies returned right away. Things start to escalate until Hal, using one of his inventions, intervenes. He tells him he wants to meet the sheriff face to face, which apparently is the first time he's seen him. And here, we, the audience, get to see him for the first time as well, at least below the head. And, yep, he's pretty weird. At the station, the cops are all worried about what they're up against. And they should be, because they find Belial outside and bring him in, where he attacks. Here we get to witness some truly beautiful special effects. I'm actually not even joking, I love it. But the reason this guy looks so goofy is because there was supposed to be blood gushing from his eyes and mouth. But they decided to make the movie less gory, which does kind of suck, but also then we wouldn't see this face. So I call it a win. Blyle ends up killing every single one of the cops at the station, and one guy accidentally shoots Opal. The sheriff shows up right in time to see the carnage and to see Dwayne escaping with his brother. He fires a shot and ends up hitting Belial. But don't worry, they manage to patch him right up. The same can't be said for Opal, however, because she's dead. Dwayne takes Belial to an old factory just outside of town, where Hal gets to work building something that will help Belial get revenge for taking his babies. Duct tape would actually hold it now that I think about it. See? They work all night and in the morning test it out. Well, I'd say it works pretty well. They move on to the last cop, who seems to be doing his best Steve-O impression. He's no match for an upgraded Belial, though, and he's quickly killed, too. Now it's only the sheriff left. After Eve's funeral, Ruth heads over to the police station to make a deal with him. He'll give back the babies, but they have to give up Belial. And surprisingly, she agrees to it, but he has to meet them at the old factory to make the exchange. To kill some time, the family goes to get a bite to eat, scaring the crap out of everyone inside the restaurant. A fun little cameo here is Casey. Yeah, remember her from the first movie? That's kind of cool. Anyway, that night, the sheriff holds up his end of the bargain, but they never planned on giving up Belial. Instead, the two are going to fight. We finally get to see Mecha Belial fully decked out in his suit, making him look even more like Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's no way this is just a coincidence. They had to take inspiration from the cartoon. Anyway, the two fight it out for a while until Belial ends up punching the sheriff and he falls onto the babies who finish the job. Later on, on the talk show Ronaldo, we see a couple new freaks and learn that this episode is all about strange people and the women who love them. 
Just then, the backdrop falls, and we see all the familiar faces. Ruth takes over, and she says that this is their world now. No more running or hiding. Get out of their way, they're here to stay. Have a nice day. And that was Basket Case 3. What a way to end a trilogy. I can't really say that the series got better as it went on. However, it definitely got weirder, that's for sure. There is a lot of out of place moments in this one, like when Opal turns into a dominatrix for no reason. And then there's a part where two naked girls are seducing Blyle in his dreams, which obviously I can't show that part, but it's just weird and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like, is this what my life has become? Watching Basket Case 3 alone in the dark? I do have to say that the standout character here, besides Dwayne, is Little Hal. He's hilarious, and that birthing scene will always make me laugh. There is a lot to like here, but I think everyone would agree that Basket Case 3 is the weakest of the bunch. I give it one and a half eyes popping out of your head out of four. Have you ever considered butterflies and how the very process of their creation recapitulates that of the universe and the music beheld therein? No. 